bright Swerving in the dark down an older road I'm chasing her heart tonight She makes the moon shine she Now I'll know how well I sing or not Hey, hey, welcome to the Floor You Podcast I am Paul Pleshek executive director of the National Association of Floor Covering Technicians. I am joined, as always, by the Sultan of Stick, the Ambassador of Adhesion, the Glue Sonny Callahan. Sonny, how you doing? Hello, hello. How is everybody doing today? How you doing, Paul? <laughs> oh, pretty good. I've been coming up with names for you for a while now, so yeah, I see I got, that. I've got a list going. <laughs> At least all the ones I can call you right here on. Uh, yeah, on the air. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> How's it going? You, we've, had a, we've had a busy week. No, we've had a really busy week. But uh, for those of you watching, you can see the new background and the new shirts that we're wearing. I just got to get this out of the way. NAFCT. NAFC uh, Floor You Podcast is in no way owned or affiliated with NAFCT and the opinions and events given by these two chuckleheads in no way represent <laughs> what NAFCT wants or do in the industry. <laughs> That's yeah. my PSA for the day. The PSA, never mind that it's the chairman of the board and the executive director. Nah, no, he's... Details, details, details. We don't care about that. <laughs> oh, man. Ah, got to watch my Packers this weekend. Unfortunately, they decided not to play. Really? Yeah. Yeah, same with Georgia. I watched Georgia get beat by Alabama, same as every year. Oh, they look good, look good, and then, eh, then they kind of, yeah, not so much. Get to watch the Badgers this Friday. We'll see how they do. Mm -hmm. Finally, football coming back here. Finally, that's good. It is. It, it, I did not know how much I missed sport until it, it went missing. Yeah. I was surprised. I mean, I knew I was addicted to sports, but ridiculously so as it turns out. <laughs> I watched about um, four innings of the Braves in the NL uh, NLCS, and uh, that was all I could tolerate, and that's all I watched all season and could care less to watch the World Series. Uh, me either. It, there is definitely something missing with nobody there. There's, yeah. there's clearly a... Uh, a missing excitement when you don't have crowds there and you don't have uh, reactions to everything. Yeah. Well, what gets me with baseball and I'm not trying to be political. If you're for mask or against masks, they offend both, both sides of the group because they get on first base and they put their mask on after they get a hit, but they'll go to the plate where there's two people within two feet of them that they don't wear a mask. And the reason they don't wear a mask is it may affect their swing, which mm. affects their paycheck. It's like, come on, be true to one side or the other and I'll support you, but don't play the middle like that. It, to me, that that's what, that's what bothers me with baseball. If there was some consistency in the rules we seem to have to live by now, that would be helpful. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I mean, the, the other thing is college football. Watch the sidelines. You know, who's a coach because they got a mask on, but all the other players are running around without a mask on. How much sense does that make? I think if the coach doesn't in the NFL doesn't wear his mask, uh, it's a hundred thousand dollar fine. Yeah, I, I heard that. I heard oh, it's uh, because what they were doing is they were pulling them down to yell at their players, and <laughs> and uh, Kirby Smart got the same thing. He pulled it down and yell at them, and he got a war he got a warning. Uh, so. Yeah, well, we won't get into the the personal points of view on that too much. Obviously, not the time or the place. No, no, but, no, no. I just bring it out because I think it's funny. So. But um, we have been busy. There's nothing like uh, starting a new project to to keep us on our toes and to. <laughs> yeah, I, I'd say we've been busy the past few weeks. I'm I'm assuming pretty much everybody who listens to this podcast has seen some type of press release that we've done, either via constant contact, social media talk floor, floor focus. I mean, pretty much been in every single trade rag um, out there talking about how we've created this new trade association. <clears throat> Excuse me. And uh, Paul and I are just really excited to be a part of it, get it started. Uh, at this point, it's been Paul and I for the last five years, six years now. Um, 
But uh, right now we've added more people and that's what we're gonna talk about today. We've added staff, we've added board of directors and uh, we just kind of want to go through and introduce everybody to you guys so you know what's going on here at uh, NAFCT. And the, because the biggest thing is we, you know, we know who listens to our podcast and that's you installers. You're listening to us when you're on the job site. And I want you to know what we're going to do to help you. So I think it'll be a, a good listen for you. I, I can't, I have said this many times and I can't believe deep down how many people that we've approached with this and just immediately we're on board. I right. mean, there are some people and as we go through this, I think you'll see some of these names and the, the support has been amazing. The support across the board has been, um, it's kind of humbling to think that you can do something and everybody's like, yep, we'll help. Yep, we're in. We'll help. What can we do to help? What can we do to help? No, and that's it. I mean, listen, I mean, Paul, you know, you and I have been kicking this around. I mean, literally kicking around for at least two years with a with a with a real plan of how to turn it in, turn our school into an association. NAFCT has been around for a while, but it was different, different words for the acronym. And it was a for profit school where we taught inspectors. So we've changed that model. We've gone to a nonprofit. We're a 501c6. So there's tax benefits to be involved with us for sure. Um, um, what was I saying? I lost my train of thought. Oh, so, you know, so we've been talking about this for two years. So a, a lot of our manufacturer friends, they've heard it, you know, they, they've seen what's not happened in our industry for two years when they've been talking about trying to fix the installation crisis. And we all just decided it was time to do something. And, and that's what we did. You know, we, we put it together, we put our feet to the fire and we went to the manufacturers that we know and we work with all the time. And again, like what Paul said, the support was just amazing. Everybody met uh, Sarah, obviously on the podcast before the last one. Previous so, podcast, uh, right? previous gene of the 4e podcast yeah. so we've got a good idea of that's the the three of us are the the core moving this forward the ones that are working on it on a daily basis but we've brought in some uh we've we've we have a pretty diverse group of board members it right. really well, we have one more officer we have a heavy hitter for an officer we'll go over that real quick um, we brought in uh, anybody who has worked with me or around me um, uh, knows that I have one money man. I have one accountant that I use and have used for the last 10 years. And that's, uh, that's Grant Rumsey. So he's our CFO for NAFCT. Uh, he has a master's degree in forensic accounting, whatever the heck that means from the University of Georgia. Uh, the guy lives and breathes numbers and it's just amazing watching him um, watching him, you know, watch him do what he does with, with, with our budgets and making sure everything's squared away. So we definitely couldn't do it without him. I think the forensic accounting from what I understand about it is not only can he tell you how to do it right the first time, but he can actually look back and tell you what you did wrong way back. Audit. He did audits for years. That's what he did. So it's, uh, it's amazing. He, he, he knows his stuff. <laughs> Glad yeah, to have him on board. That really is the fourth musketeer. I mean, he's on the on the money side, and we go to him whenever we're talking about different projects, different things we're trying to move forward, whether or not they're fiscally feasible or not. Um, I don't but know if you know this about me, Paul, but I can spend money. I know how to spend money very well, better than my wife even. Which yeah. Is. Yeah, but I still think compared to me, you're an amateur. So yeah, we got Grant. <laughs> it's a really good thing we got Grant. Um, but we looked at the industry and two of the people that we've really leaned on, especially early on, because we knew we were going to start with subfloors. We knew that was our first program. We knew that we were going to want to teach about that canvas first, teach about how to prepare the subfloor before we get into any of the other installation stuff. And 
really two good friends that are leaders in the industry, Sam Biondo and Seth Bavarnik, they are on the board and they stepped up immediately and, and have been definitely they've um, well, think about it. If you, anybody listening knows who Sam Biondo is with Mapay and Seth Bavarnik with Ardex. I mean, really, can you think of two more people who would have, have a better idea of how to structure a subfloor sub uh, su- substrate class? I mean, there's not there. Those two guys, they train their people who train. They know what the installers are looking for. Um, so they have a, a, a really good understanding. And we've said this before. We'll talk about it again. And I'll say it 4,000 more times in the near future. But, you know, we're starting with the substrate for a reason. You know, it, it's a metaphor for NAFCT. It's a metaphor for, uh, you know, we use it for flooring. It's a metaphor for life, right? If you don't have the bottom, the beginning, the basics, the, the, the meat and potatoes of what you're doing right, it doesn't matter what you do afterwards because it's not going to be right. So get your substrate right. Then you got a better chance of your flooring being right. So. Absolutely. And we... Um moving forward with that even. So you think about Sam and Seth, Sam Biano, Seth Pavarnik, right? They are, they're leaders in the industry. They're out there speaking at events all the time. They're, they're, they're visible in their education. And then you go and you add on Shane Jenkins with Chernox. Yep. Now he's going to be, he's on a uh, member of the sub floor committee. We have a, uh, Brian Days with Lobo Vacal mm-hmm. and uh, Joe Rizzo with Laticrete. Then, of course, Sonny and I, because we have to have our fingers and everything. <laughs> <laughs> but that's the subfloor committee then moving forward. That's what's putting together the, the program for certifying in subfloors. I mean, it's a who's who of technical training within the industry. Ardex, Bape, Chernox, Laticrete, and Lobo Vacal. I mean, between those, that's probably 80% of all the underlayments sold in the U.S. I mean, who, who, who would be better to do that? So we're excited to have all those guys. We're having meetings this week and um, ready to move that forward, be ready to go for one one twenty one for sure. Yeah, we'll be moving. That, that one will be available right away. We've got some others we're working on that will come right on its heels, but that's going to be – that's going to be the introduction to the NAFCT for the flooring industry. So we've talked before, uh, we've got an inspector on the board, Bob Lockinger. So of course, uh, Bob and I have worked together in uh, the National Institute of Certified Floor Coverings Inspectors. So NICFI, uh, I was president and he followed president right after me, he was my vice president. He served two terms there. And then uh, I was uh, on the board of the ICRC, and he just got elected there as I stepped off. So he's on the board of the ICRC as well as the NAFCT and the, I'm going to screw this up. N-F-C-A-P. <laughs> Even I get acronymed out. All right. <laughs> There's a lot of them. Yes. So that's the foundation within the industry that's working on. Um, installers and and working to address the installation crisis as well through education. Um, Their their, their training is based for new people coming into the industry, and they're going to be an educational partner for NAFCT, but their their drive is going to be through programs across the United States, bringing new people into the industry, which is, you know, something we definitely need. And Bob has worked also, uh, Bob Lockinger has worked also on the retail side. He's been on the installation side. He's been on the uh, maintenance side as well through the industry. So his uh, umbrella of knowledge is, is really broad. And I think that's from an inspector standpoint, that's priceless to be able to apply across the industry, not just in uh, very specific areas. Right. No, definitely having his experience, both inspector and contractor side. And, you know, my idea behind this whole thing is that would complement you very well, Paul, because we could have, you know, two strong inspectors on there that we can look at things differently because, you know, you guys look at things, you know, inspectors look at things completely different than everyone else. So it's good to have their perspective. 
Yeah, it's more of a 30,000 foot view instead of a very specific view of one part of the industry. Yeah, it's why. Yeah. Why this is a question you guys ask all the time, and and if you say it, you better be you better be able to prove it, right? <laughs> exactly, <laughs> especially if you're going to court. Yeah. Well, all of them. So we have that in, on the installation side. Um, <clears throat> you may not know his first name. It's Mike Pigeon. I don't know that name. You don't know that name? Uh. Uh-uh. Uh. You know a guy like that recently passed the uh, citizenship exam and became. Oh, you mean puppy. Oh, puppy. That's puppy. right. Yeah. <laughs> Puppy's on the board for sure. I don't American. even know. I know. I know Mike Pigeon's real name, I <laughs> but I, I haven't called him that in two years. His name is Puppy. <laughs> name is puppy. Uh, and we call like we, just so you know, we call him that because he's as cute as a puppy. So that's, that's why. So all you women out there. <laughs> oh, now we may have, would we have still had him on the board if he wasn't taking a citizenship exam? I'm not sure. <laughs> Yeah, I, I didn't know it was coming up so quick. He told us the day of, and uh, later that day, he sent the picture, and and uh, I couldn't be more proud. We shared it on the NAFCT social media page, but um, he's a Canadian, came came to the U.S., d- did what he needed to do, and became a citizen, and like I said, I could not be more proud. So speaking of foreigners, we also have on the resilient side, we got Kevin Phillips. <laughs> Nice. Nice. Um, nice. Am I not supposed to do that? <laughs> well, yeah. No, he's he has dual citizenship. Though, dual right? citizenship. Okay. Yeah. okay. Yeah. So he is a he is a citizen of the U.S. and citizen of uh, uh, of the U.K. So anybody who knows Kevin Phillips knows that um, his knowledge in installation is second to none. His experience with ASTM, if you want to know about an ASTM standard, he's the go-to guy. That guy knows so much. I can't tell you how many times I've called him to ask him a question. And uh, he'll be quick to tell you he was the fitter of the year in London a few years in a row. And uh, he's got that experience. Uh, but uh, he's the the technical I think it's technical director at Novalis, but he's, you know, he, he leads the technical team over there at Novalis. Yep. Great, director, great guy. Director of technical services. Here we go. So along with that, considering we have two experts on the resilient side, uh, you may recognize his last name, Brent Fike. Close relationship to Sarah Fike. Double Fike. We've we been double fight. fight. We got we got both the fights on our in our group now. <laughs> so Brent Fikes, uh, he's with Ropey. Ropey Holding Company. And he's been there for a long time, right? Long time. I'm not sure, but it might be the only job he's ever had. Really? Right out of right out of grade school. Huh? Yep. Started work. He's from Alabama. He probably started when he was four. True. So. True. Maybe that was a number of teeth. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> there are Alabama jokes there. <laughs> I got to give him a roll tide. He beat me this weekend. Uh, roll tide. Since he's from Alabama, we can say that uh, Sarah and Brent did not have the same name before they got married. <laughs> <laughs> Surprisingly, they are not related. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is definitely taking a bad turn here. Um so we go on the moisture concrete side and probably one of the faces on that uh, in the industry that's most commonly associated with speaking at events and education, uh, Jason Spangler with Wagner meters. Absolutely. Guys made a guys made a great name for himself wearing either an orange suit and now wearing a green suit. Um, but you know, when you need to know anything about ASTM F2170, he's the guy. So, yes. And if you go to a trade show, I mean, he does stick out like a sore thumb. Yes, he does. It's easy to find him. You'll never say, I can't see Jason. He's always wearing something fluorescent. I think one thing I want to get across here real quick is the idea that we, we're doing this right now and giving him a little bit of a hard time here and there because we we are friends with these people that are on the board. Yeah. We've known for a long time, and if we didn't give them crap, they probably would wonder what was wrong with us. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> when when Paul and I started putting together the list of names that we wanted to have as board of directors, um, 
literally one of the things we said to each other is we want to be able to look at that person and go, that's a damn good person. And, and, and we, we literally, literally looked at everyone that way and said, can we say that? And a few of them we put on anyway, but that was what, <laughs> that was what we were looking for. So we, we are very, very good friends with these guys and, and uh, a lot of respect for them donating their time and resources to, to get NAFCT up and going. Of course, on the marketing side, we've talked before about Tracy Muller. Yep. She makes everything that we put together actually look interesting. And make and sense. Professional and make sense. And it's amazing to me the idea that somebody can take your thoughts and actually get them into a order of uh, to present them so they make more sense than when you're trying to explain them to people right it's it's so tough when some well what is nafct okay you got an hour i don't have an elevator speech i don't have a but you she sent us a questionnaire about what it is and what we'd like to do uh, and we filled that out sunny and i and what she put together came from that but I don't think anybody else would have got what we said out of that, at least not that clearly. So, right. Well, I, I think marketing is one of those things that you don't know what you don't know. And you really can underestimate the power of marketing. Um, and I see that with a lot of installers that they think they're marketing well, but they're actually hurting themselves. Um, and then some that are not marketing at all, and then some are doing a fantastic job at it and, and they're second to none. So, I mean, as an installer, you need to be able to market yourself. Um, one, to if you're a subcontractor to the, to the contract house you're working for, or if you're selling direct to the, to, to the customer that you're selling to. Um, but there's ways, there's ways to do that. And, I, you know, Paul, maybe that's something we need to put, put higher on the list is having a how do you market yourself uh, course. So. You know, I think that that would probably be a very often attended or downloaded or, or, or sought out segment of education. I think that, like you said, you don't know what you don't know and you make all these efforts and you wonder why you're not getting where you think you should be. And having a real marketing plan is it's priceless. Yeah. You, you will grow much better and further and faster. If you involve yourself with something that actually understands marketing. Right. You think we do. We don't, we don't, we, we, we thought we did, but then we saw Sarah and Tracy going at it and we're like, huh, we're idiots. You know, <laughs> and literally we said we're idiots because what they did, we wouldn't be where we are right now if they didn't do that. No, no doubt about it. No. So, but, you know, we're talking about that marketing class that would just be, you know, in my mind, that would be just another member benefit that we have for our, for our members. I mean, it would be a video. I can't see certifying someone in marketing, right? It would be right. something that you could watch and, um, you know, we'll have those on, you know, how to do your taxes. We'll have those on how to do bookkeeping, things that we're going to teach you, but you don't necessarily need to be certified in. So uh, safety, uh, things that you can share with your customers on safety, things like that. So that's just and, an idea. And yeah, and I think that that, uh, you know, it's you can take business stuff and easily apply it to actually the business. What supplies specifically are being used in the flooring business and how to classify those, what what their, what their value is and, and what you maintain for inventory and things like that. So, <laughs> so we, somebody was telling me a story yesterday and I won't tell their name. But he, he was telling me a story about one of his guys that he knew was doing work for a builder and they had a lump sum price. I don't know if it was per yard or total, but the builder comes back. I, I need to know what am I spending this money on? What, what am I doing? What am I giving you money for? The installer comes back and he broke it down not only by labor, but the number of staples he uses on the floor, a roll of tape, <laughs> how much semen tape, how, you know, a blade that he, you know, how many blades is he going to use? And the, he said, he gave it to the builder, the builder never questioned anything he ever did again. 
again, they don't really understand. And, and that's kind of the grassroots thing that, you know, we've been talking about is, you know, for me, the people before you don't always understand what you need to be ready for your job. And I see you guys out there shaking your head, damn electricians, drywallers, painters, they know. I mean more than that. I mean the GC understanding, you know, what does this need to, how do I need to have this ready for the flooring guy? Completely misunderstood. There's something that we're going to advocate for installers. We're going to go to GCs and educate them on what needs to be done. So, but not only that, but what do you need to understand to be ready for the guy who comes in behind you? What's a completed job? And that's what grassroots is really all about. Understanding what happens before you and then understanding what happens after you. And if you have that set of skills, you're going to be a better installer and, and you're going to make more money. That's how it works. It, there's a lot of related industry that we're going to touch on as this gets going. Definitely. So we talk about uh, the, the board to this point, and we're talking about people that we've worked with before, people that have been associated or supporters of the academy when we had it, uh, when that was out before the association here. But there are three people on the board. One of them we knew before, that was Alex Wiedenhoff. Alex Wiedenhoff is the research botanist and team leader for USDA Forest Products Laboratory Center for Wood Anatomy Research. <laughs> He deserves every word in that title too. <laughs> <laughs> he does. He does. And the idea alone that somebody that is at that level of research in the, the wood industry works in Madison. Uh, there's a video coming out. Oh, this isn't coming out till tomorrow. We can talk about that. Yep. Yeah. Uh, there's a video coming out. We'll share a link on it on social media, but it actually uh, the interviewer goes into the forest products lab and the testing facility and, and talks to them. And when you see some of the testing they do down there and how big their facility is, we got to tour that at the wood inspector class we did. You know, they're shooting boards at walls trying to find out how much wind force it takes to drive a two by four into a tree. And, you know, the, 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 <laughs> yeah, it was neat to see. Yeah. It's a, it's a really, anyway, so Alex, I digress. Alex Wiedenhoff is the lead of all that research in Madison for the, well, let's not say all of it, but he's a lead, a team leader for research in Madison. Right. And um, not only did he want to get involved and he was excited about it when we brought it to him, but then he introduces us to Frank Owens, assistant professor, Department of Sustainable Bioproducts, College of Forest Research uh, Resources, Mississippi State University. Now we've got a, a, a professor involved. So we, we have a researcher in forest products. We have a professor, the uh, Department of Sustainable Bioproducts involved. Frank's amazing. Still have to take his wood ID course, but. I tell you, he, he, yeah, Frank, Frank is amazing. He, he asked uh, Paul and I to, to audit a, a, a an 18 hour wood identification course and um, sent out, sent us all the material. And you're right. We need to get going on that pretty soon, but uh, he, he's a great guy. I'm, I'm really happy to have him on board, him and Alex both. And, and, and back to Alex real quick. If you're on Facebook, just go to the search bar and search illegal logging. And he's in a video there talking about how illegal logging is how they're working to combat that with some science that they developed there in Madison but also how it's tied into so many other crimes around the world. It'll blow you away. It'll blow you away. It's amazing. Oh, and the amount of money and the, oh, the cartels it, and their involvement. Yeah, in it. it's, it's led by crime syndicates and you think it's, Oh, it's just illegal logging. They use that to fund all the other bad things are to do that they're doing. So it's, it's pretty neat. It's very interesting. So it's lucrative is what you're saying. I made a little bit of money when I was doing it, but <laughs> That's humor, people. He really was not doing that. So not only that, right? So we, we, we've talked about that, but we have an announcement. Actually, we haven't, we haven't really announced this. So, so then Alex uh, gives me a call, sends me an email, and he says, well, 
You know, there's this other person I've worked with here in Madison, Patricia Vega. Managing Director, Wood-Based Composite Center, Oregon State University. She might be interested in, in, in you know, being involved here. I spent about uh, three seconds talking to her and tried to hold back the, the impulse to invite her onto the board. <laughs> she thought you were giddy. Don't worry. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure. Um, but she actually has agreed to be on the board as well. Uh, she's from Peru. She's going to help us not only with wood composites. So we've got, we've got a researcher on hardwood forestry. We've got bioproducts, a sustainable bioproducts, college of uh, forest resources. Now they take that, we, we go to the wood-based composite center. So that's plywood and OSB and pretty much anything you take with wood and glue it together into some, some wood product that's composite. So not only do we have people that understand, have, have a, have a amazingly depth of understanding in the wood itself, but now somebody who's also working in adhesives and working in, in, in how the wood's processed and dried to, to create composites. No, absolutely. Absolutely. They, you know, and not to mention, well, we're going to mention that later, but the APA, but you know, what, what we're going to be using, picking their brains, using their minds, uh, is going to be a lot on wood substrates. I mean, we're going to have wood science. Wood substrates are completely misunderstood. Everyone thinks that, oh, it's just wood. It's good to go. I mean, we had one of the smartest people in the industry email us yesterday, the day before yesterday, and it was a complaint over plywood it's it was a stumper i mean it was hard to understand so if we have these people in place to help us understand not only the science behind the wood products themselves we can talk about air movement we can talk about moisture content we can talk about fungi we can talk about a lot of things to help understand what's going on in a wood substrate so yeah you say that so excuse me patricia was working in uh, and, and I'm gonna, just going to get this wrong, so just assume I'm doing my best here. But she was working in wood preservation and, and coloring using fungus. That oh, was pig, pigmenting the wood pig, with using pigment, the fungi to prevent decay as well. Yes, that's so. Cool yeah, I'm pretty sure they're going to be able to answer any of our flooring questions we have. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> No, that, that, that's, that's going to be neat to be able to have those resources and, and call them up and call them up with a question and they'll be able to answer it. That's, uh, that, that's, that's going to be amazing. That's a, it's a real benefit for the members. It really is. And we're going to be able to back up and have reference material for everything that we put out education wise. We're going to be able to come back and, and, you know, there might be testing we want to do in the future. There might be things that we have questions about that we just can't get the answers we that seem that an answer doesn't seem quite right that we can do testing on. You know, we've got availability there of people that work in wood testing with adhesives and Patricia and just the, the mechanics of wood. Alex Wiedenhoff did a study for uh, uh, two groups. Nick Fee was one of them in, in, uh, <laughs> I should have written this down before I thought of it, but in, in moisture gain and the, uh, the dimensional change, dimensional stability with, the, with wood, with the, with, by species with the amount of moisture it gains and loses, right? So we've talked a lot about that in the past. Can you determine the size of the board when it was milled based on moisture content and things, and, uh, or when it was installed based on moisture content? And he put together a study for that, and that was released not that long ago. But um, just the amazing amount of resource that we have there for not just our education, uh, but other other areas of interest that we can investigate down the road. Yep, I'm excited. So that's the board of directors. We talked about the sub floor committee. We talked about the no, uh, no, no, that's not the board of directors. Who'd I miss? <laughs> So when we were talking about puppy, we should have brought up Mr. Don Jewell. Oh, you're right. 
because I had them written down with Alex, and then I got talking about that. Sorry. Oh God, he's gonna sorry, be- Don. I hope he doesn't watch us and give me crap about He doesn't, that. so don't worry. He doesn't. <laughs> He's not one of the four people. <laughs> I, mean, I was simply saving the best for last. Oh, there you go. Next right. Time. And uh, I was, uh, I had him written right down next to Alex and that, but. Yeah. No, he, uh, he comes in with about 30 years experience of installing and finishing wood floors. Uh, he's the technical director over at Loba Vockel. He's ahead. Of, he's in charge of all their education, in charge of their technical projects. Um, one of my best friends. He's just a phenomenal guy. Uh, we've talked about him before. He's been on the show. He is uh, top three, in my opinion, in the world on cork. Uh, he knows all about cork and how it works and uh, just an interesting person to have. And we're, we're looking forward to have his input. And we've talked a little bit about some of the training. I think we brought it up before, but Lowe Vockel's putting together a training center that is going to be second to none in the industry. <laughs> yeah, we, we, we've been there. This, this place is amazing. So those of you in the Southeast will know where it is. It's the, the old CMH space warehouse and distribution center in Wadesboro, North Carolina. So as you know, it is humongous. So they've taken a lot of that warehouse space and turned it into a training center. And uh, they have two, two separate training centers that can house 30 people at a time. Um, so big, large screen, they have work areas so you can do hands-on. Uh, they've got a game room. So when you're on breaks, you can play video games. I mean, they've, uh, they've done it right. Not to mention that where you stay, you stay out in log cabins called the Shoals. Uh, it's a nice place. It's nice and quiet. Um, so it's a, it, it's, it, it's a very good class. You need to look into it for sure. All right. Now we've done the board. We've gone through. So we've had some conversations this week and, and parts of last week. After announcing this, we've, so any of I have, have made no bones about that we are trying to participate in the industry. We're trying to uh, shore up some areas that maybe are getting missed, um, increase the number of classes available, working on getting people trained and educated for less cost and and more convenience. But as part of trying to work with everybody, we've had some conversations with other trade associations. Um, Hopefully as an example, last week we had on FCICA, Catherine Church and uh, Pat Kelly. So, we have, we had them on, we talked right now, actually, I've got it, uh, well, it's shut off now. Sorry, FCICA, I, I'll be watching again as soon as we're done recording this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, their convention's going on right now, as a matter of fact, that's, that's when we're recording, so. Yep. So we've got to talk a lot about that. Sonny met with the board, he's on the board, but he met with the board to talk about NAFCT and FCICA and how Things seem to fit there, so won't go too far into that. We talked about that last week. Um, had some conversation with the National Wood Floor Association, Brett Miller. Uh, excellent conversations about what we can do and some ideas on how to work together and get their standards out. Of course, you know, we're not we're not reinventing the wheel here. The National Wood Floor Association has installation standards. They've got problems, causes, and cures. They've got all the different publications for the industry. So um, we're working on that. Um, We had uh, National Institute of Certified Floor Coverings Inspectors, NICFI. They just elected uh, John Parro, the new president. So Bob Blockinger finished up his term. That official? Yeah. Okay. Yep. (laughs) Oh yeah, we had the, I was on the meeting uh, Monday. Yeah, it was Monday, two days ago. So John Paro, uh, elected president. Yeah, they're going to kick my butt. I forgot who was elected vice president. Oh, well. <laughs> uh, you talked to APA, right? I did. I've spoken with them a couple of times, and we're trying to get together a conference call, um, you know, explain to them what we're doing, how we have a substrate class. Um, so their document E30 is um, – it has a section on floors and underlayments. That's just, you talk about tools you need to have in your toolbox. And I talk about 1869, 2170 and 710. 
you're a project manager or you sell jobs, you need to have E30 from the APA in your toolbox. It's that important. So we're looking to combine a lot of that data that's in there, use some of the pictures. And um, again, not trying to reinvent the wheel. We're trying to just get the information to use and let you know where to look for it if something were to change. Absolutely. APA, all those publications are, are free, right? Yeah, as long as you sign up, uh, give them your email address and sign up and create an account, you can download all that for free. Absolutely free. They're PDFs. So uh, I've got a complete folder just full of APA documents that uh, make it real easy to, to, uh, 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 to get to, but you can also just go to their website and look whatever you want in case it's been updated. And it was just updated in 2019, by the way. Disclaimer, um, if we're wrong, we're wrong. <laughs> we're, we, we don't know for sure if they're free or not, but I, everything oh, I've seen is not, free. Not all of them are free, but the, there, there are a lot of them that are free. Some of yeah. the more advanced books, yes, they cost money. Yeah. Okay. Certainly not all of them are free. Yeah, I'm on, I'm on that site pretty regularly. Uh, we had conversation with uh, the, the directors at the Floor Covering Education Foundation and WFCA. Yep. Those are together right now, but I wanted to, always wanted to refer to them separately because they will be, FC, the Floor Covering Education Foundation will be a, a independent entity here at some point. Right, right. Um, he we'll, runs the day-to-day. -day. Steve Abernathy is, is going to take over running it. Um, so we had a meeting with those two and Scott Humphreys. So uh, really good meeting, talk with them. And, um, you know, I, I, I found it funny, one of the comments from Scott Humphreys when we were on the, um, on the call and I, I'm, I'm feeling Paul cringe right there, but I, I really respected it that, you know, he said, we, we, we do not feel like you're going to be competition with us, with the CFI. You know, we welcome anybody who's going to try to better the industry. And he feels like that, that's what we're trying to do. And I really respected him for saying that. And, uh, and I don't think it's going to be a conflict. We're, we're both going to do training and we're both going to try to make this industry better. And that's really what it's all about. So that was, it was a great conversation. We always appreciate that uh, sentiment when we're talking with people, because that's really what we're working hard to get across. Yep. Um, yeah, sure. I mean, it's, it, it's right in our mission statement and somebody's going to go, Oh, it's a mission statement. That doesn't mean anything. <laughs> what well, does, I mean, uh, we've seen all these associations and organizations just be islands out there. I've got this, I've got this, you've got, you know, I don't have what they have. Heck with that. All right. We all need to work together because you know what, somebody may have a better program here than your program. So let's take that one and let's get it all together and combine it and make the right thing for the installer. So you hear us talk about career path all the time. And depending on what flooring or what side of the industry you want to go in, you're going to pick and choose which one you go to and you deserve to know which one's better and not just spend money somewhere because somebody said, take that class. So that's, that's kind of the way we're looking at it. And, and we want everyone else to look at it that way and, um, you know, and work with us as much as we want to work with them. We had a uh, meeting with ICRC met with Michael Dakduk and Kevin Pearson, the yep. chair and the uh, executive director. Uh, just mostly an introduction telling them what we're about. Of course, I I knew them, but more letting them get to know Sonny a little bit and saw some areas there we can work together. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Great call. And, and again, they were shocked that we were going around calling these associations. You know, they just, they couldn't believe that someone was being that proactive. It's like, you know, we're the new kid on the block. We've got to introduce ourselves. You know, most of these people we know, I mean, FCICA. How well do I know FCICA? I'm on the board. I know everyone there, but we still took the time, told them what we're going to do. Um, it's just it's just about being respect. I mean, what did The Rock say? You don't reach into another man's refrigerator without asking for permission first. So you, you just got to you got to understand what you're doing and, and doing these introductions. I think it's going to go a long way in getting us all to work together. Definitely. Um, CRI. CRI. I spoke with CRI. Um that was an interesting conversation, <laughs> but, you know, part of what we want to do is, is in our training, we want to reference the 104, 105. I mean, th that's the, that's the document when it comes to residential and commercial flooring, carpet installation, 
And uh, we want to make sure that everyone who goes through has a copy of that because again, another toolbox you have in your toolbox may not be a tool, but it's a document to show you why you have to do it. Why are you taking the time to do this? Why are you doing this? You can just show the builder, show the contractor, show the homeowner. This is how you do it right. And, and, and that's really part, um, I'm going to skip ahead for a second here. This is really part of our two-prong approach that we've got. I mean, we want to get installers on board and we want to get them certified and we want to have them trained uh, to know where to find these documents, to know where to reference, to know how to do it right, to know how to protect themselves. There's so many things they need to know. But once we get that base of, of certified installers, it's going to be our responsibility to go out and teach the homeowners, teach the general contractors, teach the architects. This is why these guys are certified and girls are certified. This is why, this is what they need to do. You need to look for a certified installer. May not be NAFCT certified, maybe CFI certified, maybe NWFA certified, right? Mm -hmm. That's the point we're trying to get across, just certified. That's what's going to build the industry and make it better. CRI can't do it by themselves. We can't do it by ourselves. NWFA can't do it by themselves. The base of people that they all have together is still a tenth of what we need before we can make a certification required. Imagine somebody coming out and say you had to have a certified installer and there's only, say, 15,000 of them across the country. That's not enough. That's going to cost their, that's going to drive their cost up to where they're going to be like, nope not going to do it. I'm just going to take my chances with something else. But if we have 75,000, if we have 100,000 installers, we can make that mandate and we can drive the manufacturers. Then we're in the position, we being the installers, we're in the position to dictate where we need to go and what we need to do. So that's that's big picture. That's, that's down the road, step two, phase three, whatever you want to call it, um, of where we want to go. I, just well, I, don't, I don't know that that's necessarily a phase. I think it's going to be a direct result of what we're able to accomplish as far as the numbers of people we get certified. It's, it's going to be a process to get us to that point. But I think that, uh, I don't think that anybody disagrees. They love to, and manufacturers that I've talked to, they love to require oh, certification. Absolutely. No, I agree a hundred percent. And again, you know, we, we, we've been talking about this two weeks, three weeks, making it official and really talking to people We've already got 11 founding members or 10 officially, but one more is coming on board. 10 official founding members who donated a significant amount of money to help us get this up and going. So imagine next year when we're up and going and we're trying to get our educational partners, you know, we're going to have 50 to 75 educational partners, associate members. We're going to have that pool of manufacturers that they're going to see what we're doing and they're going to be like, oh, okay, well, if we can demand that and the competitors are going to co command that, that or demand that, that, that's worthwhile because it only protects them, right? I mean, Absolutely. why would you not want a certified guy doing it? So speaking of founding members, we are accepting founding members uh, to the end of the year. If yep. anybody out there would like to get involved, you can contact us on your eye, but you know, one of the things with founding members is those are the groups we're going to offering positions on the educational committees right away, right? So if you're a founding member and you're invested and involved, I mean, that's why we're talking about the people on the subfloor committee that we have. They got in as founding members. It's not a, it's not a, like a, they didn't pay to be on that committee, but they're invested in the organization and we give them an opportunity at it, right? Yeah, it's a commitment. I mean, we're not, it's essentially a membership fee, right, for 2020. But we we really don't have anything to offer in 2020 other than developing the curriculum. Now, when 1121 hits, we'll have courses, we'll have videos, we'll have webinars, we'll have more member benefits than a lot of other associations just because we want to get people involved um installers by the way are just going to be a hundred dollars a year so that's all it takes to be a member if you're an installer so keep that in the back of your mind and if you want to help develop the curriculum i've sent this out on multiple social media sites trying to get installers to get involved uh, we want installers involved on the committees 
right? Yes. Please, if you're listening to this and you're an installer and you want to get involved in committees, even if you've never done it before, we value your input. See how this works. There may be other committees that you want to be on as well, but we want it, we want your input. That's the only way this works. Again, can't have a bunch of suits, can't have a bunch of manufacturers who, you know, even look at our board. We have um, we have a lot of installer based people on here, but none of us install day to day anymore. It's been years, right? We need that. We need that influence from the installers and we need we need you guys to participate. Well, and that's that's a we're talking about this as a trade association. This is going to be, this is a trade association for the, the people that are working every day in the industry. Like you're saying, installers, uh, we'll have retailer stuff out there as well. We're, we're going to be a broader based on just installation, but the, and, and as a trade association, it's our job to help make the industry better for our members. And a big part of that is getting installers in a position to be able to communicate with manufacturers and standards bodies and, and the industry overall to communicate things in the industry they think need changing or things that need to be addressed. This is going to be a forum for that. We have, we have the ability to create that interaction and that's what we're going to do. Right. That the advocacy aspect of what we're trying to do, even I didn't understand the true magnitude of it till just a few weeks ago when we started doing this. But imagine having representation at ASTM. Imagine having representation at ANSI standards, um, NWFA guidelines, CRI, um, even with us. That's a huge influence because you're the ones who are ultimately using it. Guess who's writing those standards now? Manufacturers. Guess, and I'm a manufacturer, so let me put that in there first. I'm a manufacturer and I help write these. Guess who the guess who we're writing those things to protect the people in the room, right? And it's not that we're trying to do anything bad to installers, but if there's a gray area, it's going to go towards the manufacturer. I guess would be a better way to put that. Well, and you don't know somebody else's point of view unless they're participating. Yeah. So even if a manufacturer, you know, of course you, anybody that's on a committee is looking at it from their perspective. And unless we can get the installers involved, that perspective isn't even really known that well. So that's, that's, if we can get installers on the committees and they can have these conversations about, you know, installed with pre-existing conditions, for example, I know that's a big sticking point with installers that if the floor, floor coverings installed and it has a visible issue and then Manufacturer will say, well, you could have sent it back if you didn't install it. And the installer will say, well, you didn't find it. Why'd you send it? Well, I can see both point of views. That's the problem with being an inspector, but that's where that discussion should take place. What? It's not the only one. Just no, it's know. not the only one. No, <laughs> no, but it's probably one of the more common ones, <laughs> common concerns. So, but we have to have installers involved in order to get those conversations going. No, I, I agree 100%. It's, um, it, 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 it's something that needs to happen, and and we just need to hear the voice of the installer at these committees. That's just going to – that's the only way to get something done. Um, we saw it at um, – you know, when we were meeting a couple of years ago trying to get things done, I, I looked around and saw all the suits and ties – and there, I could only see that I knew there were three other people who used to install, and every one of us were 20 years ago since the last time we installed for a living. And, and my point in that meeting was, who, who are we to say what needs to be done? Where, where are the installers? And, uh, and I think a lot of installers felt the same way. They commented the same way uh, when the minutes were shared and the notes were shared on social media that... Uh, but yet I haven't heard any installers reach out. You know, you, you, you've got to be the one to say, hey, I'm going to make a difference. I'm going to help. And most of the time you can do this via email or Zoom call. You don't have to travel to an exotic place to, and spend four days and be out of money, uh, you know, be out of, uh, have funds out of pocket. 
You can't, you don't have to do that. Everything's via email. There's plenty of ASTM members who haven't been to a meeting in 10 years. They do it all. You can vote via online. So, yeah, I'm, I've never been to a meeting personally, but I'm on committees with, with ASTM. Right. So oh. there, there's plenty of ways to be involved that won't affect your pocketbook, won't affect your time. Check your emails like you do every single day. You can read the documents on where it is and you can understand if it's something you want to do or not do. So have we covered everything? Have we covered everything? We talked about everything. We we talked about all our points that we uh, discussed beforehand, but. I think so. I got a note here to bust Woody's. Oh, wait a minute. That's something. <laughs> we could, uh, we could shut off the phones after giving everybody a hard time and int introducing the board. <laughs> no, I, 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 you know, again, I just, I can't overemphasize how much um, we want the installers to get involved with this to we're not trying to take over anything that's already in the industry. Um, I'm, I'm members with most of the other trade associations. Uh, most of them have reached out or we've reached to them. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think it's going to be a, a great relationship between all of us and I'm excited about it but we need your input. That's the most important thing. We can't do it without the installers out there, project managers, uh, inspectors, salespeople, technical salespeople. Um, we're looking to have almost 40 classes by the end of 2021. There's gonna be something in there that you're gonna wanna take and you gotta be a member to take the class. So uh, I think you'll be excited about it. We'll have more, um, you know, we'll have more announcements as the year get comes closer to an end and we get closer to 1121 and uh, be excited to show you what NAFCT for you is all about. NAFCT for you. That's where you find us on social media. Yep. You can find Sonny. You can contact Sonny, Sonny at NAFCT.com. Paul at NAFCT.com. I probably have of all the groups of friends that I have, I by far have more floor covering family on there than I do in any other group. <laughs> the the second group is probably people I went to junior high with that I haven't seen in 35 years, but for some <laughs> reason they want to be involved in my life. But flooring is definitely the biggest group that I have. And it's great to have uh, my Facebook is just filled with flooring feeds every single day. Yep. I, I, Every time a group comes up or a group invite, it's like, okay, one more, one, one more, one more group. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you all for listening. We'll be back next week. Both of you. Both. No, no. There'll be dozens. We're up to 18. I think we got, we got a hundred subscribers. Come on now. <laughs> Thanks everybody. We will uh, see you again next week. Adios amigos. Smile can light up the sky. Sometimes it's frightening, struck by the light.